The little girl thought about the third princess, thinking she was totally stupid or something. She wouldn't let her bully her a second time. Chiki turned to her sister and informed her that she had some things to do, so she would leave first. To which Ye Chen abruptly grabbed the little girl. She asked about where she was going, because her sister was kind enough to talk to her, and Chiki dared to ignore her. Chen abruptly dropped the little girl and asked about whether she enjoyed pretending to be miserable in front of her father for the sake of making him pity her and love her. Even in front of her, she does the same thing. Sister Avon abruptly ran up to Chiki, but she was abruptly intercepted by the third princess's maidservants. Avon asked about what Chen was doing. She kept asking the third princess about whether she was afraid of punishment, because no matter what, the seventh princess is also his majesty's heir. Ye Chen's maid slapped her and told her that if she said a word, she would be the next to get what she deserved from their princess, so she should watch her mouth. Chiki stood up sharply and asked who she was, and shoved her sharply saying that she was nothing but a hyena tied to her mistress who let her abuse her sister Avan, to which that maid turned to the third princess to see how insolent the seventh princess was. Chiki thought that it looks like Ye Chen wants to fight with her so she will give her a beating and prove that she is not a little girl who is easily intimidated. Chen thought that it was a waste. A little girl like her wouldn't be able to handle her servants. Chen ordered all of them to catch that ugly girl, and if they let her escape, they would all be punished. The third princess came up to her and explained that she wanted to see how hard she was working to get away. But just then, the little girl abruptly took and bit her hand. Everyone immediately rushed to the third princess, forgetting about Chiki, who was pinned to the ground. Chiki stood up and said that she had allowed her to be arrogant and overbearing, disrespecting her elders and lording it over the little one and bullying them. But now she would act on behalf of heaven and teach her to be a goody-goody. The little one swooped down on Chen. She ordered her not to move, to which the third princess asked what she was doing. Chiki slammed her head against Chen's head. That's what made her fall down. The little girl ordered her to get up, for they weren't done yet. But that was just Chen's tears watering. She had forgotten that no matter how arrogant she was, she was still a little girl. Chiki bringing her to tears is a sin. The third princess's conscience asked about whether she was all right. To which Ye Chen asked about what that one was saying. After all, she had seen what she had done to her. Chiki explained that if she can't handle her emotions, she should just cry. But that kind of parenting is not inherent in a princess. Chen would still continue the bullying after she cried. Chen said that she would die with her. Suddenly, the emperor appeared and asked about what was going on there. Ye Chen rushed over to him and said that he should teach Chiki a lesson because she dared to raise her hand. She is crazy. Lian ordered Chen to stay away from him. He leaned over to Chiki and asked what had happened, to which the little girl replied that they just had a fight. Leon took the little girl's cheeks and asked about the bump on her forehead and if it was just a fight or what. He then turned to Chen and informed her that she would be grounded for a month. If she commits the crime again next time, he will take her to Jijo Palace, put her in a corner, and then she will think hard about her behavior. He asked Chiki to come with him. Chen was crying and couldn't understand why he didn't believe her. The servant turned to the princess and asked her to get up from the ground, for she was cold, to which the princess shouted that they were a bunch of useless idiots, for they giggled and just watched her being bullied. She ordered them to spill. The second brother appeared and reported that he kept puzzling over who it was that was yelling at the servants and disturbing his sleep, and it turned out to be the third princess. The appearance of the second brother made Chen terrified. Meanwhile, at Chiki's, the little girl asked her father to wait for her for a while, as she could not keep up with him. The emperor asked why she did that a few minutes ago, because she can't fight with anyone all the time. Tsitsi said that she wouldn't do that anymore. Her father started to lift her up in his arms, to which she explained that she was dirty. Lian informed her that he was aware of the fact that she had gotten dirty, and so he asked her not to dodge the question. This tyrant had always been suspicious to her, but at this point there was an opportunity to clear things up. Chiki started talking about how it all started on his birthday. On his birthday, he sent Chiki to study at the Imperial College. Sister Chen was originally the only princess who was allowed to enroll there, 
But now Chiki is also studying there, so she was naturally angry. The emperor explained that she always had problems with poetry and calligraphy, and he wanted to stop her studies, but she was praised and insisted on continuing her studies. Sister Ye Chen is the daughter of Empress Rong, who lives in the main palace, and Chi Qi is the daughter of a commoner, so Tai Fu Qin does not value her as much as Sister Ye Chen. Empress from the main palace, indeed in the imperial college, it is customary to worship the highest. So she may assume that Empress Rong and Qin Tai Fu are secretly conspiring. But this child in front of her is also worthy of studying there. The little girl walked to Sister Awang. She asked her about those servants, saw her, and so they ran away because they are afraid, or what? She answered that they were not. They were not afraid. They were just in a hurry to go about their business. Chi Qi asked about what happened and asked her not to hide anything. Avon replied that his majesty's brother Zhao whipped the third princess's maids who provoked her to fight with her. Perhaps his majesty gave such an order. So now all the servants in the palace are afraid of him. Her tyrant father has made her a respected person that everyone fears and it's for her own good. Chi Chi suggested to her sister to take a walk. They were met by the minister who greeted them. Chi Qi thought about whether it was Tai Fu Qin or whoever. Chi Chi immediately grabbed Sis's hand and turned her around in the opposite direction, away from the man. Sis asked about what was the matter after all. They were going to the imperial garden, to which the little girl replied that there was no need to say anything, but simply to follow her. The man turned to the princess and told her that he was Minister Lao, and then asked if she remembered him. It's not like he could be wrong about her. Chi Qi replied that she had not seen him once for seven years. To which the minister replied that if she didn't remember him, it was no big deal. He was going to visit the seventh princess's palace himself to ask her to go with him to Guo Zikyang school. Chi Qi thanked him for his kindness and informed him that she didn't know him at all. So, they would see each other later. Just taking his feet in his hands, the little girl disappeared over the horizon. The minister asked her to wait. He offered to give her a puppy as a reconciliation and he could also buy sugar pumpkins. But even that couldn't stop the princess from running away. She didn't understand what was going on and why the minister was chasing her, because it was so uncultured. Only she wanted to catch her breath as suddenly she was grabbed by her hand. It was the sixth sibling who covered her mouth with his hand so as not to give her away and asked her to keep quiet. Chi Chi noticed that he looked even worse than he had since their last meeting. She wondered if he was injured or if he was sick. The minister didn't understand why a princess with such short legs could run so fast. Shengu reported that the man had already left. He asked his sister why he was chasing her, to which Chi Qi replied that he wanted her to go with him to the village to listen in on the phone conversation. The sixth sibling reported that there was nothing bad there, and then asked about why she was running away. The little girl explained that she didn't want to be the center of attention, which also applies to traveling. Guo Zijiang looks like a school, but it's actually a place where powerful people collide. Now Shengu realized why she was acting like that. He coughed. Chiki asked if he had hurt himself or if he was sick because he looked terrible. Shengu briefly replied that it was none of her business. The little girl thought about how she really shouldn't worry about him, let alone talk to him. But she doesn't know why every time she sees him, she feels that he looks a lot like her. But it's worth staying alert in case he pulls something. Shengu informed her that she had to go back, because being born in the palace, she was already doomed to survive, and if she hid forever, she would just die. It was the first time he had analyzed the pros and cons with her, and perhaps the first time he had opened his heart to anyone. Brother explained that as for her safety after she went to the village, she should let her sixth brother protect her. Now that she had heard of his secrets twice and he hadn't bothered to kill her, it was safe to be around him. They walked out together to the minister, who immediately took notice of them, especially the seventh princess. Shengu asked about the fact that didn't the seventh princess promise to draw his portrait last time. Chiki informed that she could start right that minute. Shengu informed her that she should then go and paint sooner, rather than later. So she did. Only the minister was once again left without the princess's attention. The sixth prince turned to Taif Chin 
and informed him that he could not linger any longer, for the students were waiting to ask for advice on their articles. Central Hall, His Majesty has arrived. The little girl immediately rushed over to her daddy, but just then, the little one noticed behind him, Tai Fu Chin again. She asked him about why he was there again. What a persistent one. Tai Fu Chin turned to the seventh princess and informed her that the sixth prince had stopped the minister in the morning, but he missed her and wanted to give her something. In his hands, he held a cute little puppy. The minister went on to say that he had heard that she had a kitten named Dabai and then asked about how she looked into getting a puppy too. Tsitsi asked about who told him about Dabai being a kitten. Suddenly, Dabai comes running into the room just growling, which startled the minister. He couldn't believe that it was Dabai. The minister just threw the puppy on Dabai's head and fell down from the realization. Chiki explained that Dabai was a white tiger. The emperor ordered Tai Fu Chin to be taken to Tai Yuan's healer. The little girl went to her father and reported that she had thought about it and was ready to give an answer. The emperor asked what kind. The little girl reported that she wants to go to the village to improve her skills. The state superintendent can train people and guide them to improve their skills. Chiki doesn't want to be a stupid princess. She doesn't want people to think that the emperor's daughter is illiterate. Leon picked her up in his arms and informed her that he did not recall his daughter being so eloquent. The little girl reported that this was true. The emperor explained that he could get her a place there in the spring anyway if she wanted, but in the meantime, she should go change and they would go for a walk somewhere. Tsitsi was excited. She asked about them being outside the palace or what. Lian explained that if she wanted to, he would take her out of the palace often. The little girl thought about the fact that she thought the tyrant was getting jealous, inviting her out of the blue for a walk. She reported that she remembered everything. The emperor asked about what Mohan had bought her that time. Lian bought her anything she just wanted and showed her. She had a lot of fun with him. She asked her father about whether they bought too much, to which Leon asked about her not liking the way her dad treated her or what. The emperor thought about how ridiculous it was that Mohan was trying to trick his daughter into buying only three sticks of sugar hawthorns. The little girl informed her father that she had the best daddy for her, so she would be the best daughter for him too. She suggested that her father go to the fish fair. A carriage that ran very close could have caught the little girl but the emperor took her away carefully. Mohan appeared from the carriage and turned to his niece. Chiki asked why he had come, to which Mohan replied that he simply had nothing to do. He missed the feast he and Tsitsi had made that day. He then turned to the emperor and informed him that he was there too, to which the emperor replied that unfortunately yes. Mohan saw that amount of sugar hawthorns and asked about him wanting a store to open them or what. The emperor informed that it was for his daughter, to which Mohan replied that it would be bad for her to eat so many sweet things. Her father turned to Chiki and explained that her dad just didn't want to seem stingy to her. The little girl reported that she wants to eat already. It was impossible for her to understand how the brothers had lived in peace with each other for so many years. The emperor took his daughter by the hand and informed her that he would take her to the fish fair. After everyone sat down at the table, the tension came. Chiki didn't realize what the awkward silence was all about. Leon asked his daughter to sit closer, since it would be just the two of them eating. Mohan informed that he too would be eating with them, for he too was very hungry, to which he replied that he did not care for him. Mohan explained that it did not matter whether he was hungry or not, for they had to feed the child first and put a piece in her plate. The emperor didn't understand the meaning of they and put a piece in the little girl's plate as well. At last, she would be able to eat. Everyone took turns trying to put food on her. It was too much. Chiki turned to her father and uncle and informed them that she wouldn't be able to eat that much food, to which they collectively replied to her to just eat. Half a month later, Lin Yuan Pavilion. Avon was gathering the princess with the words that she had her first exam, and so she shouldn't be late. On the way, she spotted the sixth brother. When he's relaxed, he looks so innocent and harmless. If only he was always like this and wasn't bothered by all the fighting. Tsitsi took out a piece of paper and a pencil and decided to draw him. She wanted to keep this portrait as a keepsake. 
But suddenly, Shenggu snatched the portrait from her and informed her that Dao Qin was right, that she was a gifted girl. The little girl asked him to return the drawing, to which Shenggu replied that since the portrait was painted for him, he would accept it. The little girl informed him that she would complain to her daddy and he would beat him. The sixth brother explained that he had heard that she had a fight with Ye Chen in the Imperial Garden. Chi Chi replied that it was true, but it was Chen who provoked and insulted her first, so she couldn't help herself and hit her. She is a child, so fighting is normal for her. Shenggu reported that later, the emperor's concubine and Qin Tai Fu were informed about the incident, but her father realized early on that it was Ye Chen who was involved, and punished her mother as well. And then asked about the fact that she had deliberately set it up herself, didn't she? Chiki couldn't believe that he had guessed even though he didn't have any proof, but knowing her motives was tantamount to staying close to her. Only the little girl wanted to reply as Shenggu explained that he didn't say she did wrong. After all, it's not easy for anyone to live in the palace because it's always a place rife with trouble. It seems that he didn't mean to hurt her. He went on to say that there was no shame in hurting people to save his life. He asked her to try not to have a showdown in public next time and to never tell anyone. Even though she had almost gotten into his personal life twice, he didn't seem to want to get rid of her, and instead taught her how to survive. He informed her that they had to go to the State Department. Perhaps about the palace she should confide in this particular guy. Chiki asked him to wait for her. National State Department. Chiki turned to her brother and reported that there was no bench there. In addition to the place where the Crown Prince usually attends classes, there are also descendants of honored generals, but there is no shortage of people who rely on their father's achievement. He asked the little girl to stay close to him. She wondered what the sixth prince was like in class, whether he was lazy or not. The third princess is still under house arrest and won't come to class. As soon as they entered the classroom, everyone started to pay attention to Chiki. They were wondering who she was, why they hadn't seen her there before. She must have a good education to study in the State Department system at such a young age. Chi Chi was looking at the floor, so she didn't notice the boy and crashed into him. She didn't realize who it was, but his hand was heavy. He Jing, the servant's son, shouted about what she was looking at. She has no conscience at all since she almost knocked a man down. He kept asking about whose child she was and who she was looking for. She replied that she wasn't looking for anyone. She just came to study, but she still asked for his forgiveness. To which He Jing asked about if they heard that little thing say that she came there to study. He kept asking questions about what an unsociable girl like her forgot there. Chiki thought about how his father wasn't that powerful, and he himself dares to make himself in charge and bully the weak. The minister's son kicks his finger at her and talks about how funny she is, just listening to her babble. The little girl so eagerly wants to punch him. Shengu, who had just appeared, lifted Chi Qi into his arms and looked at He Jin angrily. Shengu asked about him hurting his sister and still dare to call him brother or what, to which the latter replied that he didn't know that he was that girl's brother and asked for forgiveness. He Jing said that the sixth brother did not mind. He would ask his father to pay him for moral damages. Shengu ordered the man to shut up. It seems that He Jing is the son of a high-ranking official of the former Jing dynasty. The sixth prince ordered the man to scram. Chi Chi didn't understand whose child he was, the minister of labor, the minister of punishment, or the minister of ceremonies. He asked Chi Chi to sit next to him and not fidget when Mr. Chin entered the classroom. The teacher began the lesson. He talked about how they would be reviewing the UN opera they studied in the last class. He asked them to open their textbooks. Shengu thought to himself that this lesson was boring for him. He was more interested in how Chiki understood the material. He turned to her and saw that she was already sound asleep on her desk. Turning to him, she grabbed his hand and pressed herself against him. The sixth prince noted that she was too intrusive, but there was nothing wrong with that. She's like that innocent white kitten that the empress kept and escaped from her. Shengu hugged his sister while the teacher read the lesson. All the bad things were over. He ordered the teacher to be more lively. After a while, Chi Chi woke up. She didn't understand why she fell asleep in the first place. 
The sixth sibling reported that it was the first time he had ever seen someone sleeping so soundly in class. Chiki immediately jumped up from her seat and explained that she didn't fall asleep on purpose, she just dozed off a bit, to which he said that she had slept so much that the class was over. The little girl asked why the sixth brother hadn't left, to which Shengu replied that if the queen's honor guard had not returned to the palace and the roads to the palace had not been closed, he would have left long ago. The queen should also be at the palace, so he would go with her. The sixth prince reported that Queen Rong had gone to Ningzhou Tianjin Temple to pray for the country for three months, and she had only just returned. Chi Chi reported that the queen is the biological mate of the three princesses. After such a long separation, she must be very caring towards them. He grabbed her hand and explained that it was natural. He heard that the queen had just returned, went to the palace of the three princesses, and then asked his sister about why she was afraid. Now Ye Chen may not be afraid with the support of her mother, will definitely sue her for slander. Shengu explained that she won't be too well in the next few days, so she should take it cautiously. To which the little girl briefly replied, clearly, the palace of the three princesses. Chen spoke to her mother and informed her that she had no idea how badly her daughter had been hurt. If not for the concubine's return, her daughter would have been almost humiliated at being trampled into the dirt. The concubine asked about who dared to insult her like that, to which Chen replied that it was the one born from the cold palace concubine, Ye Chiqi. She was born from a pathetic, abandoned concubine. She wondered if she would be a threat or not. Chen reported that the concubine didn't know anything, and her father doesn't care about her at all, but for some unprecedented reason, in the past few months it seems as if she's been replaced. She has had to resort to tricks and stratagems to gain her father's favor and secretly began to read and draw. Now that she is a clear favorite, she dares to strike the emperor's favorite daughter. The queen asked about the fact that she dared to hit her, to which the princess replied that she did. But her father refused to listen to her and even punished her for a month. The queen kissed her daughter and told her that she had to make the decision for her because her daughter had suffered so much. But she was back and would not let anyone bully her. She waited for her mother to deal with that girl. She thinks she should go see Ye Chiki. Walking towards the exit, Chiki started to sneeze. The sixth prince asked about her catching a cold or what, to which the little girl replied that it looked like someone was saying bad things about her. Suddenly, a man appeared in front of them, white, grinning, fan and foxy looking. It was the second prince Ye Aoshin, Shengu greeted him. Chi Chi hid behind Shengu and thought that it was all over. It's really him, Ye Ocean, the second prince who really likes to draw attention to his person. The second prince said that the last time he saw her fighting with the third sister in the Imperial Garden, she seemed very brave and heroic, and he was lucky enough to see her side, and then asked why she was so timid at this moment. Chi Chi didn't understand how she had missed him, because he was there. Aoshin explained that the seventh sister's eyes were very sharp. Shengu intervened and explained that she was still young and could not see the difference between beauty and ugliness. The second prince reported that a rare opportunity to play with this dumpling, with her then cold and ignorant character. Chi Qi is indeed an interesting child. Ye Aoshin might have some good things to say about her, although he might already be thinking about killing her. He crouched down and opened his arms with words for Chiki to come to him and hug his other brother. This shocked the little girl very much. She hid even more behind the sixth brother's cloak. The second brother asked about her fear of him selling her or what, to which the little girl replied that she wasn't. She decided to approach her brother after all. That's it. Her life is over. But suddenly Shengu grabbed his sister's hand and yelled for himself. He turned to the other brother and asked for forgiveness. But Chiki was afraid of him. He asked why she was afraid of him, as if she was trying to eat him. But he only wanted to hug her. Tsitsi turned to the other brother and told him that men and women should not have unnecessary contact. This left him perplexed. He asked Shengu about not being a man or what. To which the sixth prince replied that he was still young, and he didn't need to worry about such things unnecessarily yet. Aoshin said that the sixth brother, who is a recluse by nature, 
decided to play the hero and save the beauty, to which Shengu explained that his brother was being facetious. The second prince turned around and lastly added that it was very good, because he wanted to see how long he could protect her. Chiki asked about the second brother holding a grudge or what, to which the sixth brother replied that they will see. The little girl asked about what she should do then. Shengu took her bag off her shoulders and put it on her with words about if she can avoid, and if not, fight back. Chiki asked about just relying on the two of them together. He informed of how glad he was that she was using the word they, because it had been years, no one had ever said they to him. Yeah, buddy baby. Seemingly young, but the tone is so old-fashioned. Weiyang Palace Avon met them and asked about why the princess came back so late. The servants are so anxious. The little girl was immediately approached by Dabai. Shengu asked her to be careful. Chiki turned to the sixth sibling and explained that it was Dabai, and she was taking care of him. Awan added that her majesty is fine. Dabai started growling at the sixth prince. Chiki reported that Dabai is usually not like this. He is very obedient and she doesn't know what is wrong. As she walked down the hallway, the little girl heard from the royal study, the emperor shouting about how it was fatal for them to get an official salary and eat rice every day, and then asking about why he couldn't get rid of them all. The little girl glanced with the corner of her eye into the study and thought about how her tyrant father was mad again, or that at times like this, it was best to stay away so as not to accidentally get crushed. The little girl's cup accidentally broke. The emperor yelled about whoever was there better get out. Chiki looked out and turned to her father. He asked about why she was there. The little girl stood in the middle of the room and thought about the fact that it wasn't a good time for her to visit yet. It was as if there was a war going on in there. Chiki informed him that she had come to feed him. He asked her not to move. The emperor lifted her up in his arms and ordered those to clean up the place. Already after cleaning up, he turned to his daughter and asked about her bringing something for daddy, to which the little girl replied that it was a pineapple cake that he would like. He asked about the fact that she made it herself, to which Zitsi replied that she doesn't know how to cook, so he shouldn't take offense at her. Mr. Zhao asked to be allowed to go first, for safety's sake, to which the emperor replied that there was no need and took a bite. Leon reported that it was delicious. Then Chiki decided to try it too. As soon as she rolled up her sleeves, the emperor saw the wounds on her arm and asked where she had hurt herself. Chiki replied that she cut herself, accidentally, when she was cutting a pineapple. The emperor asked about the Weiyang palace servants being tired from their work and letting her touch a sharp knife or what. Leon had already ordered the lord to bring all the palace servants to which the little girl informed that it has nothing to do with them, because Chiki wanted to prepare it for her daddy to eat, but she accidentally scratched herself. It has nothing to do with other people because her daddy can't implicate innocent people. She called her dad by name. Her father asked if he heard her call him by his name correctly, and then added that he didn't know who taught her those words, but since she begged, they would get away with it this time. But he wouldn't let her touch dangerous things in the future. The little girl replied that was fine. She thought she would have to get away with it, but she didn't expect him to be so unpredictable. She almost got her sister Avon and the others involved. She better be careful from now on. The emperor asked about what about going to the country to observe and learn right that day. Chiki replied that it was very good. Father asked about what her master had taught her. Chiki wanted to know that too. She replied that she had learned the three character classics. The father reported that it was really hard for Chiki. The little girl hugged her daddy with the words that it is not hard. Chiki is very happy and kissed her father's cheek. He informed her that if she didn't keep up with the curriculum of the Imperial College, he could give her a little trouble, but she wasn't allowed to cheat next time. It turned out that he knew she was lying. Guo Jiquan never taught basic courses such as the three character classics and mainly focused on poetry, books, and articles. The students studying with her, heroes or children of heroes, are much scarier from her, so he is not surprised that she is so hard to study. Chiki talked about how she met a chatty kid. He was not the son of which hero he was. His name was Hei Jing. 
Lian explained that he was the second son of He Yuanzhang, the Minister of Rights. He had mediocre qualifications and was not worthy of much responsibility. Besides, the Ministry of Rights has no real power, and then asked about why she was asking about this person. Babe explained that she doesn't have many people she comes in contact with, so she is interested in learning more. The Ministry of Rights, the second son, has no real power, and it looks like he is not part of the Queen's party, so he can use her for his own purposes. He asked her not to talk about others and gave her a pen. Cheeky asked about him giving it to her, but her hands are so small and this pen is so big. Lian leaned over to her and informed her that she's still small, so it's naturally not for her, and then asked her to help with something and whispered everything in her ear. After a while, Cheeky was on her way out. She was met by the queen who asked about why she was there, to which the little girl replied that she was bringing food for the emperor's father. She didn't understand why she ran into him again, and the queen was also there. She should get out of there quickly. Chen asked about her delivering the food, and then noticed the hand in the little girl's hand. She asked about the one stealing something or what, since she was so suspicious. Chiki replied with a smile that she had never done or stolen anything like that, and moved the pen to her basket. Chen rushed over to the little girl with words to give it to her. One motion and the basket with everything was already on the floor. Chen reported that the one was really brave for risking to steal her father's pen. Suddenly, the emperor appeared and asked what the problem was. The third princess explained that Chiki dared to steal from him. This is really outrageous and he can't ignore it. Chen kept looking at the little girl and smiled. He thought that if she dared to steal something from the palace, she would be killed. Lien said that he had ordered Chen to stay locked up for a month, and then asked who would let her out. The queen appeared and explained that he should calm his anger. She was the one who had lifted the ban without his permission, because the third princess had realized she was wrong. Lien informed that whenever he issued an order, the queen that she could disobey it at will. Chen rushed to her father and informed him that it wasn't the concubine's fault, she was the one who wanted to see her father and knew she had done wrong. The emperor asked the princess as to whether she knew what was wrong. She hasn't learned anything else over the years, but Chen has learned a lot of evil as he sees it. The older she gets, the uglier her heart looks. The concubine intervened in their conversation and explained that she was the one who brought her up badly, so she apologized for it. Leon stroked Chiki's head and asked her to give him a pen, which he gave her. Chen turned to her father and asked about the fact that he was the one who gave her this pen. It was the pen Lang Hao Ju used for the manuscript. The emperor asked about what she wanted to say with it. Chen had many questions about it not being stolen by that princess. How could her father give her such a valuable item? She didn't understand why things were like this. The third princess approached Chi Qi and apologized for slandering her. The third princess, who had always been feisty, now bowed her head and admitted her mistake. Chiki didn't understand what was wrong with her. The little girl replied that it didn't matter anyway, as she wasn't angry with Sister Chen. The little girl turned to her father and asked him not to be angry with her little sister, for she had already realized that she had made a mistake. Just look at how sneaky she is. Leon reported that Chi Chi is very sensible and reasonable. Chen thanked her and said that she would escort her back to Weiyang Palace, to which the little girl replied that it was fine and not worth it. The third princess took the boy by the hand and said that it was time for them to go, as her concubine and her father may not have seen each other for a long time, so they should not disturb them. Already in the carriage, Chen asked if she could ask her a question, to which the little girl answered positively. There could be nothing worse than this situation. She should have run away while she could. Chiki is completely surrounded by her people. Even if she killed her right there, no one would know. Get rid of the body and be done with it. The third princess asked about the tricks the little girl used to bewitch her father. Chen had asked her father for that pen several times, but he had given it to Chiki. Chiki informed her that she could give her the pen, but asked her not to be rude. Chen asked what she thought she cared about what she would give her. Chiki at least knows who she is looking at with her arrogance. One move, and the pen was thrown out of the carriage. Chiki ordered them to stop the carriage. 
Chen asked about the one who was upset or that if she hated her so much, she should just hit her. The little girl turned to her sister and advised her to get out of the carriage and find that pen. The third princess told her that she didn't dare give her orders. Chiki, getting out of the carriage, informed her that after all, the pen was not originally given to her. Chen didn't understand what she had just said, how it wasn't for her. She asked her to explain everything to her. Chiki said that her little sister had asked him for the pen many times, and her father had not refused because he thought she was too young to use it. He asked Chiki to send her the pen, saying that she must be old enough to use it. Chen was a little confused and asked if it was for her. If you think about it that way, Chen's heart is not bad. At best, she is just a spoiled little princess. Chi Chi can't attract much attention, but the queen is quite the Megara. The original story said that she was the one who would conspire with the previous dynasty to betray the country in the future. It looks like it's time for her to make a plan of action, so she's going to have to go to a meeting with her allies soon. Poor little girl, Chi Chi thinks Chen is still struggling with whether or not her father loves her. Changhua Palace the next morning. The guard reported that the sixth prince had just woken up and asked the seventh princess to enter the inner hall and wait for a while. Chi Chi thanked him and told him that the sixth brother's palace was similar in layout to Wei Yang Palace where she lived, so she would be able to get there on her own. The prince explained that she could walk there by herself. As she walked down the corridor, Chi Chi thought about the fact that as soon as she crossed the threshold of this castle, a chill creeped up her spine, and besides the guards at the gate, she didn't see a single soul. She heard footsteps behind her and turned around to see the man who had been opposite the sixth prince in the pavilion that day. That man leaned over to the little girl and asked about the man who had let her in. She heard his scent. It smelled like blood. The little girl remembers that the sixth prince in the original story was poisoned by the main character. Not only the sixth prince, but the great tyrant, the second prince, was also killed by him, this man in black. Chiki trembled. The man wanted to touch her. Was it not the dark thread dragging at his heels? I recognized him, but she doesn't want to die like this. The sixth prince appeared and informed her that she was just a doll. Why scare her? The man bowed out. Shengu asked him to go first. It wasn't time for his part yet. Now that she's there, she has to do something. Chiki can change great tyrants and is able to change their fate. As long as the hero doesn't show up, these villains can survive. Shengu asked about her being scared to death and asked her not to let go yet. The little girl didn't realize that she was clutching her brother's clothes. Her brother wondered what she was doing in his palace so early. Chiki said that she had talked to her father yesterday, and he said that the guy from Guojiquan was the minister's second son. Shengu asked about what she meant to say, that the ministry was not among the parties patronizing the queen or what. Little replied that little brother is very smart. The Ministry of Rights has no real power, but it has a very impressive capital. If the queen really wants to bring it to her side, then all three of the minister's sons should go to prison, not just that little parasite. Chiki explained that with his smarts, if he can become a ruler in the future, maybe he can save this country. He's so smart. Well, she has the power to influence him. Shengu leaned over to his sister and asked about who taught her such words. The little girl immediately explained that she had made a mistake and asked him not to take her words seriously. Suddenly, the strap of her bag ripped and a notebook fell out. Shengu picked it up and asked what it was. The little girl told him that it was nothing and asked him to give it back. The brother opened the notebook and saw Chiki's drawings. He told her that her drawing skills were really something. Little reported that it was an accident. She asked him to remember that the prime minister is a scoundrel. The appetizers were just about to be served. They looked very appetizing. Shengu informed her that she shouldn't eat them, as the Imperial College would serve more delicious appetizers that day. Then the seventh princess announced that she was leaving. The sixth prince asked the servant what she had put there. The servant replied that it was just a little poison that would make him sleep, but that poison would not kill him. He asked why she was poisoning him. The servant replied that the seventh princess was too clever. If anything went wrong, they were afraid she would be a hindrance to him. 
The prince reported that she had forgotten her place and warned that if it happened again, she would blame herself. Imperial College. As soon as Chiki sat down at her desk, she heard shouts asking how he dared to attempt to attack the princess, if he was going to die or what. The little girl turned her head and saw the whole picture. She was greeted. He Jing was begging the third princess to spare him, after all. He didn't want to do that, and he was doing everything for her. She asked about who asked him to wipe this princess. Was she so dirty or what? He Jing kept asking for her forgiveness. Chi Chi turned to her sister. Chen informed He Jing that if he didn't want to die, he should get the hell out. The two students asked what it was, and that was it. Because the last time someone accidentally provoked the third princess, that person hung naked in a big tree for three days. Looks like the third princess is in a good mood. There's nothing to see. Chiki didn't understand why the sixth brother hadn't come yet. Chiki is usually slower than him, so he should be there by now. Suddenly, Chiki was approached by He Jing. He informed her that her sixth brother would not be coming. The little girl wondered why. To which he replied that since it was on the 15th, he doesn't come on the 15th of every month. She asked if he knew why he did not come at that time. To which the guy replied that he didn't know that. The original story didn't mention it. A third princess came up to them and informed them that he was sick. How could he not be? She kicked He Jing hard with her foot, with words about rolling away as he had no business being there. But the guy lastly informed that he would still come back. Chen turned to Chi Chi and asked about what she was staring at, her eyes five-pointed. The little girl turned away from her and thought about why she was still so mean. After all, it's not typical of the second prince. So young and already a bitch, it would be better to study well. The teacher suggested that they start the lesson. First, they would check how they had learned the program of yesterday's lesson. He turned to the seventh princess and invited her to continue with her next sentence like snow on a mountain. At this time, the little girl thought to herself, but she is the unlucky one. In her past life, she was a brat, and in this life, she is plagued with learning and it's horrible. Suddenly, there was a whisper that continued the row. Cheeky replied, as bright as the moon among the clouds. The teacher replied that it was right. The seventh princess is so young but already so wise, he would tell the council that she should pay more attention. She thanked the teacher for the praise, but what she really needed was to get away from her, and that was it. She turned to her sister and thanked her for her help. Weiyang Palace. Chi Chi had already arrived home. She thought about how going to school was very tiring. She was very tired. Chi Chi's mother, concubine Rong, appeared. She hugged her daughter and told her that she missed her very much. She is so cruel, she doesn't even come to visit and see her mother. This is Chiki's mother, concubine Rong, who was thrown into the cold palace. The concubine reported that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. Her Chiki has become so beautiful. In the original book, concubine Rong treated her daughter badly. So why then did she make such a scene of deep love between mother and child? The concubine suggested that they go into the palace first. Whether this person was an enemy or a friend, she better keep an eye on her. There is little mention of the seventh princess's mother in the novel. She only knows that she made a mistake and was imprisoned in a cold palace. The emperor and Mr. Zhao were overseeing all of this. The lord reported that the seventh princess had not been loved since childhood. He has no idea how much she suffered and now finally reunited with her mother. So touching. Lian asked the one to calm down. Sister Avan met the little girl and motioned for them to go to the hall. Chiki asked about the whereabouts of Dabai. Awan replied that concubine Rong said that Dabai had gotten too big. Fearing that he would hurt the princess and the palace people, she ordered him to be locked up in the backyard in a warehouse. Chiki couldn't believe it. The concubine explained that it was a tiger, not a kitten, and the dog could be used as a toy. It's all for her. It's all too familiar. The mother informed her that she would live with her from now on and asked the little girl to tell a new story every day. The book said that she had a withdrawn character, didn't like living with others, and didn't even care for her own daughter. The emperor walked in to see them. The concubine greeted him. 
The little girl stretched out her arms to her father and ran up to him. Savior, the great tyrant is indeed on time, and her palace would have been overrun if he had come an hour and a half late. Leon lifted his daughter in his arms and asked about when she was in class. Did she miss her daddy? To which the girl replied that she thought about him. Her father asked her if she was not paying attention to her lessons or what. Then, seeing her face, he kissed his daughter on the cheek. He asked her to forget about it. The concubine, watching such a picture, was convinced that this girl was so beloved that the rumors were not lying. Leon turned to the concubine and asked about what she was doing there. The concubine replied that she missed her daughter very much, so she had the courage to come and visit Chiki. The emperor, hearing this, replied that now that she had seen her daughter, she should go back to her cold palace and not run away again. The concubine began her notion that Chiki was also the daughter of the concubine. She lived with the concubine in the cold palace and had never been away from the concubine, and the concubine could not live without her daughter. Chiki didn't understand about whether she was really a loving mother or if she misremembered the branch from the original story. The emperor asked about her meaning that the child was born from her alone and had nothing to do with him. She immediately began to explain that this was not the case. Leon went on to say that she had raised his child in the cold palace sickly and emaciated, with scars all over her body. If he hadn't known she was the biological mother of the seventh princess, he would have dealt with her long ago. The concubine reported that she knew it was wrong. He ordered the servants to drag her out to throw her back into the cold palace. The concubine wept and spoke of how she was willing to suffer the punishment, but asked that they not be separated, mother and daughter. Her heart could not bear to be separated from her daughter. The little girl wondered if it could be. They really had a strong bond. She didn't understand why she suddenly felt uncomfortable. Maybe she should judge the good and evil of people on her own, instead of following the instructions of the original story. Chiki turned to her father and let him know what she thought about it. He lowered her to the ground, and the little girl approached her mother. She made it known that if the mother wished, she could ask her father to let the mother live there. Tsitsi put conditions on the mother that she could not lock her dabai up and could not commandeer her there. The mother tearfully agreed. The little girl went up to her father and asked about whether everything was all right, to which he asked about how she thought, for she had verified all his ideas in two sentences. Tsitsi reported that since she knew her daddy loved her, she dared to be so presumptuous. He learned at a young age to be proud to be loved. Chiki could understand that. The little girl kissed her father on the cheek. He needs to give happiness to this concubine as well. The concubine didn't realize that this little girl was so significant to his majesty or what. Chiki informed that let her maid clean the East Hall for her, Daddy agreed. The little girl's mother thanked his majesties. She thought that it seemed her trip was not in vain. Her daughter was her ladder to the palace. It's already late at night. If she insists on taking concubine wrong, the great tyrant might be displeased. That's right. The great tyrant always acted willfully, who would dare to disobey his order. This time she had offended him. The little girl approached her father and asked about him being upset or what, to which the man briefly replied no. Tsitsi offered him a hug, but he declined it. She asked him to give her a hand. As it happened, she jumped on it, but just gradually started to slide off. The emperor grabbed her hand to keep her from falling. He said that he had met thousands, if not tens of thousands of people in his life, but she was the bravest. The little girl apologized and swore that she didn't do it on purpose. She hugged her father and asked about her daddy still being angry, to which Leon replied that he could do something about it. He informed her that he would get back at her. He pressed his cheek hard against her. Leon kept talking about how she was a bad kid, spoiled and proud. What happened a couple minutes ago, his way of revenge was completely unique. The emperor announced that it was getting late. It was time for bed in the princess's room. The father tucked his daughter in. Mr. Zhao came in and reported that he had found him. The emperor asked him to speak quietly. Mr. Zhao whispered everything in his ear. The emperor realized that she really had other plans. Leon asked him to keep an eye on her, 
as she was the princess's mother, and if anything was wrong, to report to him immediately. Mr. Zhao understood. The emperor can't kill the concubine right away, but if she harms Chiki, he will break all her bones. In the morning, a scream was heard that made the little girl wake up. She didn't realize what was wrong. It was the concubine screaming. She asked about who gave the order to release this beast and ordered them to capture Dubai immediately. The concubine kept shouting for him to get away from her. She gave the order that whoever released the beast, they should naughty him and beat him forty times. Did she decide to reveal her identity so soon or what? Chiki didn't understand. That one had already raised her glass to hit Dubai, to which Zitsi ordered her to stop. The concubine asked about why she let this beast out, and what if it bites, then what to do. Chiki asked about concubine wrong forgetting what she said yesterday or what. Her mother replied that yesterday was yesterday, and now she lives there, so Chiki better save the palace and kick that jerk out. The princess briefly explained that it wasn't a beast. It had a name. The concubine noticed the princess's eyes. She didn't understand why her eyes weren't like before at all. It was unexpected, a bit like his majesty's. Chiki announced that she was going to the Imperial Academy, and so she would not be able to accompany her to breakfast. She should not be embarrassed. The concubine didn't understand what was going on. For ever since she fell into the water as a child, she had been cowardly and stupid. Imperial College. She noticed that the sixth sibling never showed up. She wondered what happened to him, since he never told her. Someone came up to her, and she already thought that the sixth brother had come. But when she turned around, she saw that it was the third princess. Chen asked about the look on her face, and was she disappointed to see her or what? To which Chiki replied that she wasn't. Then the sister put her bag beside Chiki and asked her to move over. The seventh princess asked why she chose to sit beside her. Chen replied that it was an honor for Chiki to sit next to the princess. The little girl didn't realize what had happened to her, that she stopped hating her. Chen reported that she had heard that her mother had caused a scandal at Weiyang Palace yesterday, and her father had almost thrown her out of there and executed her. Her mother treated her so badly, but Chiki was so kind and let her stay in Weiyang Palace. Chi Chi's memories of her mother from the original owner of the body are rather vague. She didn't understand how Chen knew that concubine Rong had mistreated her, whether the third princess knew the past Chi Qi or not. Chen exhaled a sigh of relief and said that it was good that the concubine didn't beat her again. Chi Qi didn't know what she was talking about. Chen started to talk about whether Chi Qi remembered when they were younger, but she stopped herself in time and sadly said that she didn't remember anything because she seemed to have really forgotten. It seems that the memory from the past of the real Chi Qi is slowly returning. The little girl remembered how they went boating. Then Chen asked why she still endured the abuse, because the concubine beat her so much. If she wanted, Chen could ask her father to allow her to live together. These memories were always in the mind of the real Chi Qi. But why did the relationship between them become like this? Chi-Chi asked about the fact that they knew each other before, to which Chen asked about what she remembered. The little girl replied that she didn't remember much. It seems she once fell into a frozen lake and lost part of her memories. Chen started hitting her sharply with words about the white-eyed wolf. The little girl asked her that if she wanted to say something, she should speak up instead of hitting her. Weiyang Palace The third princess thanked her for giving her a ride, and asked her not to be sentimental. They were just on their way, so she gave her a ride. But the princesses suddenly heard the cry that those servants are a bunch of scum. They can't even catch a beast. How pathetic they are. The third princess was curious about what was going on, so Chiki suggested that they watch. What they saw was this. Avon explained that Dabai was the seventh princess's favorite pet, and the servants dared not to rashly chase him away. If the seventh princess found out, she would be very angry. To which the concubine asked about her being her mother, how dare a maid like her get mad at her? But that maid dare to cross her, or what? Avon replied that she dare not, but the princess will be back soon, so she shouldn't. But before she could finish her sentence, the concubine asked about how a servant like her dare threaten her. The concubine ordered Jouer to slap Avon. Chiki frowned as she watched. 
Chen asked about how she didn't care if her maid was beaten or what. Chen informed that this concubine was a problem, to which the seventh princess asked her not to worry because she was about to take care of it. Chiki told Chen to go back home, as she would take care of it herself. The third princess asked about the fact that Chiki still feels sorry for this concubine, and she still wants to take responsibility for her. Chen is worried about Chiki. It seems that we can say 100% that this woman is incredibly evil, but we still need to observe her, so for now the only way out is this. And she whistled to Dabai, who immediately understood the command. Jueir asked Avan, how dare she disobey her mistress's will, and only raised her hand to strike as Dabai immediately grabbed her and started biting her. The maid Shwe'er asked for mistress's help, to which the lady herself started running away and begging to be rescued. The mother saw that Chiki had returned. She saw that the tiger was running right behind her. The concubine stood behind her daughter and said that it was not easy for her to give birth to her, so she would die for her mother and kick the baby towards the tiger. Chen became behind Chiki's back and accurately led her away. The little girl didn't realize what that familiar feeling was, as if Chen had already saved her once before. It happened when the real Chiki was already living in a cold palace and was very hungry and climbed into someone else's garden. She was the first person she had seen outside the cold palace, very pretty and with delicious buns in her hands. Chen asked about what she wanted to eat and held out a bun. Chiki asked about if she could. The third princess introduced herself to her and asked about living in a cold palace. If she ever got hungry and was looking for food, she could come to her. The little girl thanked her. She had made her first reliable promise to her, letting her know that there was always a ray of light waiting for her outside the dark, cold palace. When they met for the second time, she brought her more food and medicine. Then Chen kept asking about who was beating her, why she had so many bruises, to which Chiki replied that her mother was beating her, because while she was hurt, her father would visit her. When Chen heard about concubine Rong bullying her, it was the first time she got so angry. Then Chen asked the concubine directly how there could be such an evil mother who beats her child mercilessly. She loves her and protects her. Chiki bit Chen with words about not being allowed to swear at her mom. Chen turned to Chiki and asked about whether she really bit her because of her mother or what. Then Chen firmly made it clear that she would no longer care for her, and she should go after her mother and just die in the cold palace and hit Chiki. But she let her down a lot and hurt her. That's why she hates her. Then the concubine turned to the third princess, and then to her daughter, and said that she did it by accident. But she didn't have time to finish. Chen simply kicked her with her foot. The concubine immediately threw herself into tears and explained that she really didn't mean it. Then, the third princess said that she hated her and the concubine should try her whip. Chiki noticed that the third princess was so brave, but in the past she had managed to bring her to tears once. At that time, Chiki didn't understand why she was acting like that. Chen noticed Chiki's look and asked about her looking like that. Did she think she did wrong or what? Then the princess explained that if Chiki wanted to say something, it was better to refrain from doing so. If it wasn't for the little girl, she would have beaten her up a long time ago. Chiki took her hands, which puzzled the third princess, and thanked her for saving her. Chen was surprised that the little girl thanked her instead of blaming her. The third princess was a little embarrassed, but replied that she hadn't saved her, so there was no need to be sentimental. Then the seventh princess rushed into her arms and thanked her for saving her, protecting her, and not abandoning her in danger. Chen asked about what she remembered or how. Chiki regretted the past. Chen asked about how she thinks that if she just asks for forgiveness, they will be a family again or what. Chiki accidentally fell into the water and went into a coma for a long time, and after waking up, she lost her memory and forgot a lot of things. She didn't remember it until now. She didn't want to forget her, and so she asks for Chen's forgiveness again and again. As soon as Chen heard about Chiki falling into the water, she asked about what she had done and pointed at the concubine. N.A., that one immediately started to make excuses. 
The little girl can't remember clearly, but even poisonous snakes don't damage their eggs. That case, it probably couldn't have been done by concubine wrong. Chen ordered to remove that poisonous woman, lock her in the wood room, and let her wait for punishment. The concubine would rush to Chi Chi and talk about how mom was wrong. Mom was suffering a lot. She should help her. She is her only mother. Mom gave birth to her in agony, and Chi Chi has no conscience. The third princess informed her that if that one continued to talk nonsense, she would tear out her insolent tongue. The little girl turned to the princess, to which the latter turned around and asked about Snowa wanting to protect her or what. The concubine almost killed her. Chiki explained that she wasn't going to ask for her. She didn't understand what people were like before and didn't understand the motives behind her actions. Now, she felt very guilty. Chen asked her to stop pushing pity. After all, she didn't care about Chiki. The third princess turned around and said that the little girl could not understand her, and so she was going home. She hides the real her behind a stale shell. Chiki reported that she was dizzy, to which the third princess immediately reacted and caught her sister. Chen explained that Chiki had been outside for so long and the weather was also windy. Naturally, she would get a headache. She informed that she knew the little girl couldn't manage without her, so she would go with her to the palace. Chang Fang, late at night. Shue'er asked for Madame's forgiveness for her poor performance. Shue'er replied that Shue'er had nothing to do with it, as she was the one who had treated her unfairly and cruelly. The maid said that she heard a whistling sound before she was bitten by the tiger, and then asked if Princess Kiki had already noticed what they were doing and had bitten the tiger on purpose. Then the concubine asked about the fact that she had been there from the beginning and did it at the right moment so that she would make a mistake and Chiki would be easier to get rid of her. Yes, that's what the concubine was giving her credit for. The concubine reported that this creep was already scheming. We should have drowned her in that lake then. Suddenly the door opened. It was the emperor. The concubine immediately crawled to his feet. Lian reported her throwing such words around and then asked who she wanted to drown there to which Chiki's mother replied that she wouldn't dare. The emperor came closer to her and asked her how it was that she couldn't and why she wasn't doing anything about it, to which the one replied that it was the third princess. She was defiant and ruthless and only then began to take something with the minister. Leon asked, really. He threw a bottle at her feet. The concubine didn't realize that wasn't that Hehuan San who helped him get Shue'er, and how could it be in such hands? Shue'er looked out and informed that it was not the concubine's item but hers. Leon noted that she was very honest. He reported that he wanted to keep her alive since she is Chiki's mother. But now he is sorry. He hates lying women more than anything. The concubine kept talking about how she wouldn't dare and asked him to spare her life. The emperor had ordered them to be given to the wolves to eat. The concubine couldn't believe it. The sleeping hall of Wei Yang Palace. The two sisters were asleep. Leon went in to see them. Chi Chi woke up and asked what he was doing there. Her father replied that everything was fine. He just missed her, so he came to see her. Chi Chi explained that she was really scared and asked her little sister to sleep with her. Leon couldn't understand when their relationship had gotten better since they had only argued before. He informed her that it was getting late, so they should go to bed. The little girl only wanted to ask, to which the emperor replied that she wasn't safe there, so the little girl shouldn't worry. Chiki wished her father a good night, to which he reciprocated. He stood up and stroked Chen's head and wished her good night as well. As soon as he left, Chen responded by saying the same to her father. Early the next morning, Chen could not understand how Chiki was doing this, for she asked the question again sometime later, but received no answer. The little one lay in her lap and slept. The little one asked about wasn't she afraid of being asked questions. If it wasn't for Chen, she would have been punished long ago. After yesterday's incident, their relationship seemed to be changing. The ice in her heart melted, and the third princess became more like a competent sister. Suddenly the carriage stopped abruptly. Chen grabbed the little girl's head to prevent her from hitting. Like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot.